good afternoon everybody am i audible to everyone 209 mein upar jaiye upar jaiye 209 mein baithe ho good afternoon everybody i'm dr mukesh shivastro going to start today's session the learner kenny and the the persons the dignitaries who have joined from rc lucknow a very good afternoon to all of you today we'll talk about the extension education extension so before moving towards that uh, i'm going to share my slide to all of you i think it is visible to all of you can you can you see this this slide this powerpoint presentation no no i can't see it okay, yeah now it's visible now it's visible it's visible now okay. yeah now okay visible. let me start okay this is day 2 or i should say the day 21 i'm going to start the second session that is for communication and tension in rural development rdd 7 the first uh, moving towards the extension policies and different philosophies and principles we need to understand what is basically the extension is extension is the word which is derived from a latin word that is ex out intensio getting okay? these are the three words from which this extension words come ex means out intensio means stretching that means what we trying to do we basically trying to extend or stretch the education level of the rural people living in the rural background and these are the people who are striving for their lifestyle their knowledge levels their skill sets and also their attitudes so this ed extension education is spread or disseminate disseminate the information and ideas to the rural people and try to bring out the desirable change in the human behavior basically we can see the three types of human behaviors <coughs> three types of changes in the human behavior first is change in the <coughs> knowledge level change in the knowledge level next is the skill set and third is the attitude so these are the three things in the human life or the human behavior which can bring a total change in the personality of these people the extension always try to pursue in many forms <coughs> in many disciplines <coughs> to educate themselves to motivate them to change the behavior of these people this is basically the branch of science and also we call this particular science is a extension education and also it's a strategy or method method for achieving a sustainable development when we talk about sustainable development that means we are talking about the holistic development of the human behavior and especially to the people who are living in the rural areas or rural background so we try to achieve that sustainable development using this extension education <coughs> sorry okay when we uh go further before that we need to understand what are the different authors and different persons who are the different specialist of this extension given the different kinds of definitions like esminger 1957 he has told extension is education and that is and that its purpose to change attitudes and practices of the people who with whom the work is done 
obviously the persons who are living in the living in the rural areas we try to educate them we try to develop their skills and basic purpose is, is to change their attitude and practices what they are following in their particular rural areas the national commission of agriculture in 1976 he they also says that the extension as an informer out of school education or service for the members of the farm family and other directly or indirectly engaged in the farm production to enable them to adopt improved practices in production management conservation and marketing that means it is the out of box thing when we talk about the rural person or the persons who are engaged in farming if they are individually uh, engaged in farming or their family members are also engaged in farming they may be directly involved or they may be indirectly involved so for those persons what we try to do we basically help them to improve the practices in the form of production means how they are doing their production activities how going how they are going to adopt these improved practices that means we need to tell them the technology enabled things can improve their production and also the quantity of the production as well as the quality of the production how they are going to manage these how the conservation uh, conservative techniques are older techniques and now how these conservative techniques can be replaced by the innovative ideas and innovative techniques or different techniques which are coming that that basically these techniques are tech savvy and also the marketing part means uh, most of the farmers what they do they produce in their farms and their in their fields and they they uh, use for their own consumption but there are many farmers in the different countries who export them and do the marketing of their farm products so when they are uh, enabled or they are educated how they have to do the market cover the marketing aspect of their businesses of their agriculture businesses they will be having generating uh, much growth or much money for from their production and that will increase their lifestyles obviously extension education is needed for them to increase these things extension and agriculture extension is a method that means when i am saying extension that means i am also talking about the agriculture extension it's a method or a series of method by which the technical know how of the science is carried carried to and include in the practices of cultivators the hama op in 1997 has elaborated that the cultivators who are producing something for the for themselves they have to increase their practices they have to choose the improved practices so that they can increase increase their lifestyles and also they have to understand what are the different technical aspects which are related to this so that means extension education provides them a platform or we can say that ki it's a step by step process it's a series of methods by applying these methods they can increase their production and uh, and the uh, uh, know how the lifestyles but now that they say in 1987 they have also given a simple definition of extension they have said that ki extension is to bring a desirable change in the human behavior obviously when we talk about human behavior when we are that means we are talking about their knowledge level their skill sets their attitude level their understandings for the things what are their goals how is their confidence so these extension education help them in mutual learning that means we are learning from them and obviously being an extension extension worker we we will be learning something from these farmers and these farmers are going to be learn many things from us because we are the part of that extension education so for rural development extension is considered as a continuous process designed to make rural people aware of their problems and also indicating them to to do the different ways and means by which they can solve this problem uh, when they are using these conservative methods um, what are the different methods they are having they are basically conservative methods and lots of problems have been arousing at that point 
the extension education give them simple tips to solve these problems and also after solving problem what can be the fruitful result they can generate from that particular technical know how getting now you have to understand what are the different objectives the general objectives of extension is our knowledge development skill development and attitude development the first thing is we have to develop the knowledge level and for what we are these uh, developing this knowledge for developing their skills their information that means what kind of information they are getting and how they are going to use these informations in their farming practices in their uh, lifestyle change in their skill development developing the ability to relate information to place objectives into groups to which they belong obviously individual goal setting is is only a part of that extension education but we have to educate the group of people and we have to understand what is their personal objectives and to organize information and to have an awareness of things belonging together that means if we take a specific um, examples of farmers or some specific problems of some some farmers that means we can use the knowledge for their resolution of their problems and also if a if a group of people is there so we have to organize information for all of them and make them aware that this this particular knowledge can be uh, can can be used for solving the different problem catering to these farming groups developing the ability to reason from the inductive and concrete to the analytical and abstract obviously the qualitative measures are also there and there are some quantitative measures are also there so we have to understand what is the ability for them and what are the different reasons for what they are not accepting these kind of knowledge so that means we have to develop these ability in these persons so that they can be inductive and they can get a concrete solution of their problems developing the ability to generalize and make applications yes you have to give knowledge and give the generalized knowledge to everybody if if we are using mass methods if we are using contact or group methods that means the 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 information or the knowledge level they we should give to us give to them that should be generalized and we hope or we have to concentrate how they are going application how you are going to use the applications of that particular technology or the knowledge level we are providing to them developing the ability to interpret and solve the problem we have to develop this ability as well ki how they are going to interpret their problems whatever the problem they have to discuss with the extension workers or the group of people which are going to them and trying to solve their problem so that means first is the first is the step at least they should have that much of knowledge so we have to develop this ability to interpret and also when they will be able to interpret their problem that means they will get the better solutions of their problem finding pleasure in learning in developing the desire to keep on learning yes if this habit can come into these persons he, they 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 started feeling pleasure in learning something new so that means this will keep on keep on going for the longer time and that will be beneficial for the whole rural development means all the rural areas will be starting developing when the persons attitude and behaviors are going to change second is attitude development once we have given them the ample knowledge level that means now extension educator should try to relate new knowledge to the client's past experiences attitudes and values by concentration on the following factors now we have to see what are the following factor positive past experiences prepares the learners for future relationship of the various elements yes they have to they start learn, learn learning what are their past experiences and when they are going to use the new things or the new techniques or the new strategies for growing their farming activities so they will understand ki uh, the 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 new things the new things they they'll start relating the to uh, with the uh, various elements of the future 
people responses to a situation can be understood by studying their cultural values yes because when we talk about rural people or the people who are living in this uh, background rural background they basically follow their there are some specific cultural uh, aspects so we have to uh, respect them those cultural values and we have to try we we, we try to um, uh, activate or we have to activate the things in the form of their cultural val values we have to make them study or understood the different aspect of the new technology relating to their cultural aspect or the cultural values now if i talk about the attitude attitude change is always a slow process we uh, keep on doing the different activities then only the attitude will change otherwise it will not be changed so what what we have to do it cannot be changed immediately even with the factual information even even if you are giving some information some related information some fruitful information to them even the attitude is not being changed in in few days it it is a very very slow process so that means an extension educator has the responsibility to cater the different kinds of activities again and again with those same people so that they can be able to change their attitudes forced change in behavior without changing attitudes beliefs needs and values will only be temporary change yes attitude is a slow process attitude change is a slow process but if we forcefully try to change the behavior it will not remain for the longer time period so what it it is only a temporary change so what we have to do we have to activate the different uh, different task to them we have to give the different task to them for a longer period of time for so that they can whatever the attitude whatever beliefs they are going to change whatever their needs are going to change or the values are going to change they will remain for the longer period of time and when this longer period time of will come then you can see the attitude change otherwise for very shorter period if force change has been done in the behavior that will be a temporary change they will again uh, remain on the older tracks or older practices which they are having to establish attitudes in adults almost any medium might be effective but to change attitudes of adults and this messages represent by the direct uh, purposeful experiences will probably will be most effective yes uh, for older people actually what happens when when uh, we uh, teach to the kids to the uh, younger people what happens with them they don't have any kind of frame of mind uh, so what what happens whatever we teach them whatever we give the information or the knowledge they accept that particular thing as it is but because uh, in the older person there is a problem of attitudes or they have certain uh, older age egos so they don't want to change their attitudes in the older ages so for that person for that reason we need the enriched messages we need the per direct purpose purposeful experiences is needed so that they can change their attitudes for older people i think i'm saying now one two things i have already talk about one is not is attitude development for using these development activities we have to talk about the skill development once the activities have been developed the knowledge has been developed the attitude has been developed automatically you can see the changes in the skills most of the time what happens this objective is under emphasized in the pro uh, program planning when we plan for the extension program so this is basically under emphasized thing in that is skill development but it is a very important aspect uh, in in extension education so it is the duty of an extension worker to identify the skills which are essential for solving the identified problems of these rural people skill learning needs consistent effort on the part of learner and also on the part of teacher means both have to be very efficient and consistent effort should be done on the for for skill development for these rural people <clears throat> now uh, i am moving towards the extens specific objectives of ed extension education 
when i talk about uh, the uh, specific objectives specific objectives to provide the farmer the knowledge and the help that will be enable him to farm more efficiently in order to increase production and thereby increasing his income ultimate goal is to increase their income level when once this per capita income of the rural people has been increased automatically their lifestyle automatically their things and their their attitude and skills will automatically that means we have to enable them for for uh, increasing the production level so that they can increase the income level we have to constantly tell them that these, these are the different ways so that you can increase the production level of your from a and as the production is increasing automatically the income will increase to encourage the farmer to grow his own food eat well and live well that means you have to encourage these farmers means the the people living in the rural areas to grow their own food if you are self sufficient like like in india we are Uh, after this covid period we are taking an initiative that is called atmanirbhar bharat <coughs> that means we are trying to manufacture as much as we can so that we can uh, leave the reliance on the uh, foreign countries for the different things we import from there so same here when we talk about the farmers or the rural people they have to <coughs> grow their own food and they have to take So they have to eat well and they have to increase their lifestyles <coughs> sorry to promote better social recreational intellectual and spiritual life among people so you have to increase you have to do some extra activities for in, increasing their social uh, upliftment recreational upliftment their their intellectual upliftment their spiritual upliftment we have to conduct certain types of activities and different meetings for for these kind of things also because these are the values they carry in their rural areas so that means if you are carrying this this, this particular activities or task for them because because you are also following the cultural values they are possessing so you have to increase or you have to work on these cultural values which they have in their particular region to help the members of the farm family to a larger appreciation of the opportunities the beauty and the privileges of the rural life and to know more about the world in which they live yes the farm family that means i am talking about the people who are doing farming or the people who are living whatever their sources of income obviously when they are they are they are the farm families they have to check out what are the different opportunities existing in the outer world when you are living in only in some 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 specific area and you are not looking out of that out of that box that means you cannot see the opportunities so what these extension education do they give uh, they give a uh, uh, insight to them so that they can ch- check the larger opportunities existing in the outer world and they can cater these outer uh, uh, opportunities for them for their rural their their lifestyle upliftment and also there are many things which are existing in their ambience also but they are not looking on those particular things so that means these knowledge level or the extension education provide them some that that kind of insight ki whatever the resources they are have in their particular area use those particular resources as much as you can so that you can you can affect your life whether the opportunity is coming from outside or whether the opportunity is existing there in their rural area to open up for the new opportunities for rural people so that they can develop all their talents and leaderships yes these extension education is this is the basic objective ki to to get into uh, new opportunities for these rural people so that they can develop their talents obviously there are many 
people living in the rural area they have they have some specific talents and the cost of types of so they don't show those kind of uh, talent to the world when these opportunities will come so autom- automatically they will get to know what are the different opportunities and how to take up these opportunities to build rural citizen who are proud of their occupation independent in their thinking constructive in their outlook capable efficient and self reliant in character and have a love of home and country in their in their heart always try to take pride in your country in your region and whatever the occupation you are doing try to take pride of that particular occupation because this is only the thing which can lead you in the years and that can increase your efficiency your self reliance for that particular thing if you are a farmer yes take pride that i am a farmer pride of your occupation and try to make more and more usage of the resources available nearby you so that you can be the proud of your home that means the rural area and your country as well so this is basically the basic the prime objective of the extension education now i i will talk about the types of rural extension how the different ex- extension education is given in the different different areas so when i talk about the types of rural extension one is agriculture extension animal husbandry extension social forestry ex- uh, extension rural industry extension rural health extension and rural education extension these are the different areas where we provide extension education first is agriculture education ex- uh, agriculture extension become a dynamic concept with the introduction of community development program what we do we basically develop certain communities so it was 1952 uh, i am talking about india then a national extension services in comes in 1953 it involved the education of the farmer in the field of agriculture production in scientific ideas in agriculture and supply of inputs to the farmers for increasing agriculture production this is basically the training program this is a basically a training program for the farmers through organized courses we we basically formulate certain courses and can be considered to be an intensive training capacity which is carefully planned and properly implemented with a view of view to educate the farmer systematically means step by step process are there to educate farmers and thoroughly about the about a predetermined subject matter obviously we like like we study a subject we make certain titles in those particular courses like you are uh, the students of pgdrd and there are different different courses or subjects you are studying here in rural development same for the farmers we develop courses and the different subjects are in that course and the different activities and tasks like doing a dissertation project so there is a live projects also to uh, are given to them now uh, how we manage the human resource how we manage this agriculture extension there are lot of human resources also involved in agriculture extension training programs there are different personals extension personals and farmers are involved in this at present if i talk about india at present around 120000 agriculture extension personal workers uh, are working in various categories like there are certain village extension workers there are some agriculture development officers and there are special specialists who are working and if we talk about the different categories there are four extension education institutes located in the region of the that is nilogi yana and rajendragar in hyderabad chorhat in assam four centers for extension education these are called extension education institutes there are also eight training centers etcs specific matter specialization in different states for the purpose of training of extension persons for the purpose of farmers training now i am talking about the farmers training these are the different human resources which are supported by the government now if i talk about the uh, farmers training so there are 
એટલે અરાઉન્ડ વન એટી એટ ફાર્મર્સ ટ્રેનિંગ સેન્ટર્સ ઓલ ઓવર ઇન્ડિયા ઓલ ઓવર કન્ટ્રી ટ્વેન્ટી ફાઇવ સ્ટેટ ઇન ટુ યુનિયન ટેરેટરીઝ આર દેર ઇન ઇન્ડિયા તો દેર આર ઓલ્સો ટુ સિક્સટી વન કૃષિ વિજ્ઞાન કેન્દ્ર કે કેવી કેસ ફોર દેટ આર ઓફ આઈસીએ આર લોકેટેડ વેરિયસ સ્ટેટ ઓફ ઇન્ડિયા now how we manage these extension programs agriculture extension program agriculture and rural development programs are mostly implemented by organizations which may include government departments educational institutes voluntary agencies and elect different elected bodies like panchayats obviously there are different uh, agencies uh, elected bodies are there in the in the villages these are called panchayat here in india so we also use them uh, for agriculture programs they are basically the non profit organization that we call that ngos here who may who may whose main objective of doing extension work is to improve the socio economic life of rural people in the social life and economic life that means for income development irrespective of the nature of the organizations there are some basic principles and methods which guide their effective functioning which in the modern time modern, modern technology may be termed as management obviously there are different management use for managing these agricultural extension program this was the case for agriculture extension now if we talk about animal husbandry extension how we extension education for the animal husbandry so what we do this is basically for the marginal farmers land based agriculture laborers and traditional artisans who from the most poverty group uh, in the rural areas uh, they basically uh, maintains few livestock such as cattle goat sheep poultry bird etc for their supplement of their for supplement their incomes the animal husbandry act as subsidiary to the agriculture and support to improve the agriculture productivity both crop and livestock production they are more important both are more important functions for agriculture so both are uh, having a symbiotic relationship because they, they both help each other for the rural economy if we are increasing the livestock production that means they will help in the uh, farming in farming and agriculture and obviously when agriculture or crop will be increasing so that means that will directly impact on the income of the rural people some of the mass contact approaches we use in any animal husbandry extension that are divisions already have already told you what are the mass contact method and the contact methods so these are the different methods we use in rural areas to increase the animal husbandry extension so for mass contact contact approaches we use radio television mobile show, film shows newspapers cattle shows livestock exhibitions we put in posters are there farmers exhibitions are there different cultural programs we organize livestock fairs are also organized uh, these are the for for uh, mass contact and for some group contact with used these meetings that means the panchayats basically deliver these kind of meetings demonstration of the different results and methods for different methods we use demonstration technique off campus training programs we provide uh, organized tours are there uh, different government officials come and provide some tour to the farmers calf rallies are there fertility treatment camps are there milk yield competitions are there ki which and we also provide different uh, prizes on these competition farmer question answer sessions are there we handle the different problems related to these farmers so these are the basic uh, some group contact methods for animal husbandry now if i talk about social forestry extension so first we need to understand what is the social forestry social forestry extension deals with the technique of analyzing the land use for potential under the custody of people and assessment of the need of the various forest based community so we we are not talking about that particular land which is related to the forest uh, i am talking about that particular land which is for the use of people and they assess how we can use this particular land for uh, for growing the forest based commodities it also implies assessing various kinds of cultivation options 
in different categories of uh, available land it also uh, used for motivating people to take up plantation activities like we are living in the world where uh, uh, this particular um, green gases are there so that means we are we are facing the global warming for that person plantation activities are being motivated so finally what we do we basically increase try to cultivate more and more plants in in different regions and i am talking about that particular area which is used for people for the custody of people not for the forest and finally creating an institutional structure to take care of their protection management and distribution of benefits of the to the satisfaction of the needs of all category of people in that particular rural area now what kind of patterns we follow in social forestry forestry extensions like we we take farm and agroforestry what we do here in this kind of activity we basically plantation of trees on the lands and boundaries of agricultural fields like if we have some farm farming land so what we do we basically plant trees on the boundaries of that particular field so we have two crops at a time one is in the field and other on the boundaries another is community for it forestry uh, utilizing village panchayat based land what we do different uh, village these are there where we use the waste lands the tanks foreshore land common lands for raising mixed forest plantation fuel wood plantation these are the basically the 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 crops we can use on the forestry uh, this this particular uh, waste lands and plantation depending on the immediate needs of the people like fuel wood timber fodder grass or fruit fruit trees also we can use for this community forestry another is strip plantation <coughs> you have also seen the different kinds of plants which are grown in, uh, nearby the roads uh, side roads or in the uh, railway tracks both sides of the railway tracks we use this plantation technique that is called strip plantation we use some quick green quick grown growing trees there in this kind of plantation and also another thing is that is rehabilitation of degraded forest it is a joint management of forest department and the people's inst institutions for reforestation reforestation of activities means where the forest are not there what we try to do we basically try to increase the number of uh, plants so that we can increase the uh, re, uh, we can increase the forestry there are many extension approaches are there already i have told you what kind of extension approaches for social forest we use individual based extension based mass media utilization and extension needs for basically whatever types of needs are generated we use the extension approaches in that cases now i am going to talk about the rural industry now when when i am talking rural industry that means the different kinds of industry when when the requirements are there the infrastructures are there capital are there resources are different rural area so that means it's a different kind of industry and we have to educate people according to that industry the rural industry or the small scale Helps to utilize the local, <coughs> physical, and capital resources relatively low cost. The establishment of the agro-industrial linkages and a dynamic rural-urban interaction through trade flows is only possible through rural industrialization. Now I am talking about the rural industrialization. About industries which are related to the rural areas, the different crops, the different production units, we can engage in the rural areas. These will, uh, and this, this only can increase the capabilities of rural industrialization. This pattern of growth require extension that would generate local. who can increase the entrepreneurial base who can uh, ready to take risk and come with some new type of venture existing in that rural areas we have to improve this we have to motivate them to to come up with some new ideas and concepts in that particular area 
So that can be, can be a very new type of rural industrialization. Now, uh, when I talk about government role, government also promotes extension systems. There are various organizations involved in rural industrial extension. These include small industry development institutions, extension training institution, training come production centers, and various other institutions who are working on this particular promo uh, extension system. Various financial and banking institutions are also there. Uh, who have their own training and extension staff to cater these entrepreneurial and area requirements. They, they basically train their staff and extension workers for these entrepreneurial activities <coughs> and the, 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 the different, uh, different uh, areas are different. They, they formulate their own uh, programs program based on the area requirements there are many district industry centers as well uh, it's such a nodal it's a type of nodal organization at a district level uh, or it gives gives uh, a glimpses of its activities would be enough to understand the extension effort generally extension officers covering various sub regions of a district will covering the grassroots levels. Obviously, whatever the happening at the grassroots level, they, they, these district officers uh, take care of the activities at the grassroots levels to help in identification of the potential entrepreneurs and help in preparation of feasibility study, guidance in marketing and technology, all, all, all of the aspects of business they cover and they try to help these of the enterprises and access to the various other inputs and government assistance program whatever the schemes government is generating they basically try to uh, forward these schemes and inputs to these entrepreneurial bases based on the rural areas now what kind of activities they perform there are uh, they perform sub regional industry campaigns contact programs in growth center key villages there are technical and managerial training programs. They they conduct workshops on marketing and financing. Uh, entrepreneurial development programs they provide. There are different uh, refresher courses or information courses for the students who are in high schools and colleges. There are different industry district industry coordination meetings held. The problems arising in that particular area. They can resolve the design problems. So these are ways so that uh, so that we can try to resolve uh, industry programs. Now, uh, how what is health extension? That means we basically try to uh, this this have, you have already been covered in your uh, one of the program I think uh, that was healthcare. Management, I think you have already studied, but uh, small glimpses are here in this particular subject also. That is health extension. That means the extension education related to your health sector. So, if I talk about what is basically the what is basically the structure, you know, I am talking about the block level extension setup and flow. You can see uh, there is a flow chart. This deputy media education and information officer at the top. <coughs> they coordinate with the MOs. MOs are basically medical officers at the physical health centers and the dis different types of dispensaries and hospital, which are being here in the different rural areas. So they coordinate with the block extension educators. Block extension educators provide uh training programs to the health uh, assistants that is these are for male and female both now these health assistants are giving uh, training to health workers they are also for male and female both and then some specific village health guides are there health workers basically help the village health guides which are in the small small villages and now there are trained birth attendants also in the different hospital and phcs and uhcs chcs also we we also call that csc phc is physical health center primary health center chc is central health centers so uh, your region is also these kind of nomenclature in the medical 
मेडिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर तो इन हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वी प्रोवाइड वी बेसिकली फॉलो दिस काइंड ऑफ फ्लो चार्ट एंड स्पेशली एट लास्ट देयर आर यूजर्स सो नाउ दीस आर द बेसिकली दीस यूजर्स आर बेसिकली दोस रूरल पीपल हु आर गेटिंग असिस्टेंस फॉर देयर हेल्थ एजुकेशन from these particular all the uh, human resource available at the different different level so these users can take help of from for from every level that means tbs can help vgs vhgs can help uh, health workers can help assistants can well can uh, help them block extension educators can help them different mos are there to help these users that means these rural people can get the help of from any any of the officers explaining this so this is the health in extension setup which we are following here in india now what kind of activities or the strategies were follow so they you can see this chart uh, where on the left side there are different objectives in the middle column there is a extension method and in the last what kind of thrust of the message we try to follow there so one first objective is to create awareness the first is how we can increase the awareness level how we can create the awareness level so extension method we do we we basically do the interpersonal communication with these rural people we can use the mass media as well that is radio tv uh newspaper posters wall painting folk cards drama puppetry shows for communicating the different kind of diseases for different kinds of health issues which are arising in their area thrust of message which is delivered by this basic information what we do this we basically flow the flow the basic information about health and family welfare programs to the people For who are residing in that particular area, so this will help in creating the awareness or increasing the knowledge level of these people. Second is the develop skills in the health practices. There are different kinds of health practices which can be useful, which which are harmful as well. So how we can increase or develop these skills in health practices? The extension can demonstrate the kits. or equipments and the models by the workers these models go to these people and uh, to these rural people and demonstrate the kits and the different kinds of equipments or the different kinds of model they formulated so what is the outcome or the message how to prepare or or the supplement good supplement food for children and other similar health care practices so what is the general view generalize what are the different basic things we can uh, do with them next is that is develop group support for health practices what we can extension matter you we use film demonstrations video shows flash cards demonstration focus group uh, discussions we do participatory rural appraisal programs we conduct so thrust of the message which comes that is need and importance of the health practices including its advantages and limitations as well so this will help in developing the group health support in the health practices next is clarifying the doubts about the health practices whatever the practices we are following what are the different doubts the persons are having so for that purpose we use assembling satis uh, assembling the satisfied clients obviously we we give the uh, feedbacks of those clients who are satisfied group discussions are there focus discussions are there some specific resource person we can uh, lectures we organize we we discussion panels we can organize sharing work experiences we can organize and what we, they will get anticipated complaints how to avoid them while adopting a family planning method or health practices or the diseases they are having now the follow up objective will be uh, you can go to the home visit for the treatment for the min minor ailments for uh, different kinds of health uh, health support you know do's and don'ts what is the thrust of the do's and don'ts in a health and family welfare practices so when you will do in follow up activity whatever we have given to them whatever the training program we have given using these kinds of extension method they are actually Uh, having any positive sort of that or not this is the follow up program so for that purpose we use this home visit uh, for treatment and minor ailments as, as well so 
you can understand what are the do's and what are the don'ts for these healthcare practices. Now, another thing is extension, education extension. When I say education extension, that means I am talking about, I am talking about uh, how we can extend the education, stretch the education level in the rural areas. It is the biggest problem of the rural areas that the uh, the literacy level is very low there because of this low literacy level they are compelled to live in that particular uh, uh, short sightedness environment so short sighted environment and also we need to educate these people they are basically sometimes resilient to uh, adopt some new technique because they don't know about that so and they also fear to accept or uh, these kind of new technical technological things so for that purpose we need to educate the person and when we, when i'm talking about education of these rural people the so teachers are the most important factors so we have, the government has to extend some support to increase the number of teachers in these rural areas so that you can extend the education level of these rural people. An educated person is the most convenient vehicle to spread the formal education and importance among those who are required to be educated. He may use the family, use the family which is primary group in educating the members as a means to make people understand the scope of formal education. Yes, uh, if if one person in a family is educated, obviously he can transfer that particular education to the other family members as well. So, so there is a formal education system should be there in these rural areas so that every person can understand the importance of education. So in this context, what we do, we basically uh, make the parent association, teacher association, and they are doing an excellent uh, job. Uh, these are the excellent institution through which the extension education agents do commendable job. What they can do, they inspire the uh, the parents in mobilizing the schools, going children for enrollment. You need to increase the number of enrollment in the rural areas. So they these particular groups, these associations, can mobilize these school going students for enrollment. They also help to retain the children for continuing the education by working with the family members and persuasively convincing them the need for their retention what is the happening right now in the rural areas uh, these particular association can increase the enrollment but the problem is retaining the education level what they do they study one or two year in the school and then because they work in the farms they leave their uh, school education and move to their <coughs> farm life so this is also a very dangerous thing so the retention for their education is also a very important thing <coughs> Even when I talk about the older age people uh, <clears throat> who like to receive education at the older age, or sometimes it happens because of some problems in their house or some financial position, they do not go, go to the school at the right time in the right age. So uh, government is also supporting these older age people to do to uh, make uh, give the chance to receive education at the older age as well. Different admission process should be over down, uh, and the lack of relevance of the education material should be given to them as well. The mass media, what are different ex extension methods we can use? The mass media, such as television, radio, processions, meetings, skates, street plays, these are some techniques which can be utilized to build up awareness of the importance of literacy, more particular functional literacy, you know. Uh, education institutions such as home time college national service scheme of students and youth have also been the foundation methods in spreading literacy, mobilizing enrollment of the school children and also mobilizing formal education as well. Not formal education means the, the, the education which is related to the businesses and the farming and the production as well. So the government also provides these factors for extension of the education level.
These are some historical development of rural extension in India. These are I'm not going in the detail of this. These are some individual group and community initiatives for extension programs in India which are conducted uh, through the years. Shanti Ketan, Gandhian Constructive Program was there, Bagam Project was there. Marthun project was there. Indian village service has been established here in India since 1945. There was an Itawa project in 1948. Uh, Nilokal project for refugee rehabilitation in 1948 after the partition in Pakistan. So these are the different um, uh, historical uh, developments for, for rural extension in India. This the obvious extension in rural development in India. When I talk about the uh, organized development, organized uh, efforts, government efforts in India, so there are different schemes and different programs which have been running in India, like community development program. When I say community development program, this is for specific community development. If I talk about some specific village, some specific caste people some specific community or the the person who who take care of a specific livestock livestock so these are basically community and for them these extension program has been maintained there are some national extension services panchayati raj scheme here in india agriculture programs have been started uh, because we are a very diversified country, we have the hills, we have the plains, we have the uh, mountains. So for hill area development program is also for hill area people. Intensive agriculture area program, high yielding variety. There are many kinds of uh, yielding variety we have in our country in in India. So for for the 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 variety of wheat, the variety of different grains we have, uh, high yielding variety programs are also there. Applied nutrition program, the person or the, the person who are having the low income, uh, what should be their nutrition level for that person, that for that purpose, applied nutrition program is also being conducted. Operational, operation program, there we are the country of flood, uh, of river. So every year we face the problem of flood also. For that purpose, operation flood programs are also being conducted by the government. Farmers training and education programs, small farmer development agencies are there uh, who take care of the small farmers, small scale farmers. Marginal farmers are there. Agricultural laborers are there who basically don't have their own lands. They, they basically laborers in the other agricultural land who work for the other uh, farmers so the, for them there is also a, uh, a specific agency for develop them crash scheme for rural employment and pilot uh, rural employment projects are here same here drawn drought prone area are there in india <coughs> for them we we conduct this drawn prone area programs we have also the deserts in India. For that, the different kinds of variety we grow there in deserts as well. For desert development programs are also there. TV system is also there. Visit system. For plain areas, this is Krishi Vigyan Ken. The scientific methods are being told to the farmers how to increase their production level, how to increase their uh, income level. Minimum needs program needs programs are also there. Integrated tribal projects are there. There are many areas where the tribals are living. So for them, them integrated tribal development projects are there. Common command areas development programs. Training of rural youth for self-employment. I was talking about the entrepreneurial initiatives in the rural areas. This particular program is for them. We, what we do, we basically train the rural youth, means the youth living in the rural areas for their self-employment, how, how they can generate some self uh, avenues for generating their income levels, how they can be an entrepreneurs in their rural areas. For them, this TRISEM schemes is there. Development of women and children in rural areas are there. 
schemes are there for for women develop and women entrepreneurship is also being very motivated right now in the country in the rural areas uh swarn jayanti gram sarozgar yojana sgsy this is the this is the employment scheme for the rural persons rural areas counseling for advancement of people action in rural technology ka part this is the scheme council for advancement of people how what are the different practices they follow what are the different rural technologies coming to the coming to the world and how we can train them for that kind of true technology so these are the different schemes for <coughs> <coughs> the as effort this indian government is doing for the rural areas here in india so you can also go through these schemes and you can use these schemes in your areas as well now if i would i will talk about the extension methods till now i was talking about the different uh, activities what we do in extension thing extension and now i will talk about the extension methods extension methods are instrument available to the professional extension workers to communicate and with the intended audience we have to understand the audience uh, what what is the size of audience appropriately we'll check uh, what is the method appropriate extension teaching is a skillful criteria of situation in which learners gain the stimulation the capabilities required to successfully meet their needs in the in a form that attain continuous self satisfaction as extension methods are made more meaningful and efficient extension work <clears throat> becomes more purposeful yes if if you are using the uh, meaningful uh, methods extension methods that means the result will come come out of that because whatever the gap is there existing so you can fill that gap in the rural life and they can increase they can motivate they can uplift their rural lives and their income levels and their lifestyles they are in the rural areas so appropriate extension methods are very important these are some extension method or i should say the communication methods for individual group and mass methods if i talk about individual methods home visits office calls personal letters second manuals tutorial learning these are some in extensions people are more than two or three that means we can do this method that means meeting study tours role playing discussions slides demonstration with chart and they only have only the last lecture but Boards, more charts, drama groups, and mass uh, media—that is, posters, radio, TV channels, newspapers, banners, billboards, phones, clips. These are the mass methods. Mass extension method means we have to get mass mass population. Uh, what I want to talk about is to talk about the individual method. and see this picture one uh, extension work there is with one farm <coughs> the information about farming so these kind of visits can be done uh, office calls can be done home visit can be done field visit can be done personal letters can be done circulars and adaptive and mini script trials can be done in this case in individual methods when i talk about group methods you can see a person here Uh, addressing a field, uh, addressing a meeting, and uh, he is teaching or demonstrating some activity or some some specific crop to the villages. So these kind of group meeting or result demonstration can be done. Uh, a group method is basically an aggregate of a small number of people in reciprocal discussion and interaction around some common and mutual interest. uh the different types of group methods are there like group meetings we can have small group meetings real demonstration method this demonstration can be done field day or field visit or study tours for the farmers we can arrange so these kind of group method we can adapt for extension group method mass mobilization methods uh, if we talk about mass mobilization that means we have a good number of people Most people, and we have to address. There are some problems in some of the area or some people. So we can use this mass mobilization methods. In this method, the extension worker communicates and interacts the farmer 
people without taking into consideration their individual or group identity. Obviously, they can be with the mass in the mass population. So they address the general problems they are arising in that particular area and they address that. The size of audience may be few hundreds in mass meetings, few thousand in campaigns, exhibition, millions of through newspaper and radio and televisions. So there are different techniques also, like, like we, you can use the farm publications. So like farm publications, like leaflets, folders, bulletins, newspaper, general magazines. These are the farm publication we can distribute among these people so that they, they can get an appropriate idea about that particular farm, uh, that particular problem. We can arrange some campaign as well. Campaign can be used only after an advocating advocated practice is found acceptable to the local people through method and result demonstration or other extension method we can use these kind of campaigns and the exhibitions in in the village in the block in subdivision in district state national and international levels we can arrange these exhibition where these villagers can come and see or what is basically uh, the methods, the the different different ways of seeding, uh, the different kinds of soils are there, different water quality, different kinds of technology we can exhibit there. So these kind of exhibitions can be uh, used as a mass mobilization method. Now it is very important that we we have the different kind of uh, extension methods but we have to select or we have to we sometimes what we do we basically use the combination of these methods so for that purpose we have to understand what is the criteria behind selection and what is the criteria behind the combination of these methods once we say the audience size uh, we have to understand what is the uh, what type of audience we are having what type of sample we are having so that means if we talk about audience so we have to uh, categorize them on the basis of their socio-economic structure it means they have low income group level or high income group level or if we talk about the size of the audience means if a small size of that particular audience or the large size of the audience and also it depends upon the location it is nearer to that uh, extension worker or far from the extension worker and there is another criteria that is stage of development that is less developed or more developed means humko, we, we need to understand what uh, kind of development is there in that because uh, this development stage will tell you what sort of selection of method and what combination of method you are going to do. So what we do, if low is there, we use individual method and group method. If high social economics, what we do the method. So if size is small, means number is small, so we can do the individual method and group method. And same in the nearer location, we can use individual method or the group method if that method is not very far from the can do the mass method. And also, when this developed this, uh, program has developed area, the village is there, so we should use the individual method or the group method because so that we can uh, make an interpersonal uh, contact with with the the rural people existing in that area, and we can understand the problems there so that through the face to face communication. And if the little bit developed or more developed area is there, so in that cases we can use the mass method. Now, uh, what kind of teaching objective we have in our mind for that extension worker? So in that case, we have to understand what kind of objective we are going to cater. Uh, either we are going to create only some awareness of the program or we are going to increase the knowledge level or we are going to provide some skill set to them or we are in the phase of changing attitude or some some achieving some sort of achieving technology transfer method we are going to use so for that purpose there are the suggested extension methods also creating for creating general awareness we use the mass method 
for increasing knowledge level we can use all the methods individual group method mass method increasing uh, skill level increase uh, skill level we can use all methods for changing attitude we have to we can use all methods for for actually achieving the technology transfer technique means if we are going to adopt some new kind of technologies mass method will not work you have to use the individual method and the group method at that point now uh, you you the another thing is ki what kind of extension program you are going to uh, uh, do there it is is it a national importance matter or it's a local importance matter so for that if you are this is a national importance so all methods can be utilized individual method group method and the mass method but if you are going to cater some in, uh, local problems or the local importance you have to go for individual and group method only extension organization if we talk about the manpower if you have a limited manpower yeah, if we, if we i am a extension organization so we have to look our capabilities also if i talk about manpower if maybe i have a limited manpower or maybe a sufficient manpower so if a limited manpower so obviously man mass method is appropriate method and if we have the sufficient manpower in the extension organization so you can use the individual method or the group method and also the budgetary constraints are also there if the limited funds are there limited funds with the extension organization so we should use the mass method or if that particular organization has the sufficient fund to go for individual method and the group method for mass method obviously in one activity you can cover mass of the population the a great um, good number of population but for individual method and the group method you need more support of funds because uh, every person will be paid for some uh, some reason obviously maybe he is on the district level or on the local level or he is a uh, extension worker at the ground level everywhere you uh, for individual method or group method it is an expensive method uh, now you have to understand what is the time limit you have given if your limited time is there use the mass method if the sufficient time is there individual method and the group method should be appropriate and also situation you need to understand if the normal situation is there you can all you can use any method the mass method but if the emergency situation and you have to go to the rural people and provide the instant solution so for that you have to use individual method or the mass method uh, <coughs> can we take 5 minute break should we take it's fine yes we should take 5 minutes break we we'll take a 5 minute break then we'll start <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, I'm back now. Should we start? Yes, 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 we can start. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I was talking about second combination of methods. We uh, have already discussed this. Now I'm going to take uh, the communication planning. How we are going to have the different kinds of uh, communication methods and how we are going to plan this. So there are certain principles of uh, communication planning. A sound communication principle is based on analysis of the facts in the situation. We have to understand what are the different facts that we discuss. We have to analyze those facts and the situations and accordingly we have to plan communication planning. <coughs> Selection of communication problem is based on the needs. We have to understand the needs of the audience as well as the, the, the extension worker. Accordingly, we have to plan our selection of communication, <coughs> communication problem. <coughs> Determination of objectives and solutions which are workable and offer satisfaction. Formulate the such type of objectives and the of those problems which can be workable means uh, there is no use of that kind of objective or the solution we are providing to our uh, rural people which which is not workable and uh, this non-workable uh, thing will not be the starting of the rural people uh, has performance flexibility if, if there are need uh, to change in planning so every time we can switch to some other plan a or plan b so this kind of flexibility should be there in the communication planning uh sound communication planning has balance with emphasis yes we should use the the terms or the different uh, way of doing communication planning with some balance on the emphasis with some emphasis yes balance should be there means the balance on the part of extension worker balance on the part of rural person and we have to emphasize the unique points available in that communication planning the good communication planning is a definite plan of work yes there should be a concrete plan if we are making communication policy plans, that should be a concrete for how to include that particular communication planning Communication planning is a continuous process and is teaching process as well as coordination process. It's both. Uh, continuous, it's continuous, yes, it will move on and on, but it's also a teaching process. Every time extension worker moves to some, uh, some people using any method, either using individual method or group method or the mass method, every time he is trying to teach or train to the people for some reason and also there should be a coordination between the extension different levels of extension workers who are working and also the users that means the rural people are uh, in that particular position a sound cp provides evaluation of results if if you are making a good communication planning that means you can uh, always assume what can be the result of this kind of planning. So this kind of uh, communication planning should be done. Now, when we make some communication planning, there should be some strategy, strategy development are also being done. That is called communication strategy development. How we will uh, develop that? There are specific seven steps are there. In the first step, baseline data gathering and need assessment. So we need to understand the need of the uh, extension worker. We need to understand the need of our audience, that is uh, the rural people or the villages. We have to arrange or gather data accordingly, and then we have to move to the next step. The next step is formation of our communication objectives and goals. So we need to understand what are the why why basically we have to give the answers of why why we are doing this particular activity why we are using this communication mode or extension method uh, is that particular method is necessary what will be the uh, end result 
uh, why the particular agency has been involved how much the budgetary constraint these are the different questions we have to uh, ask while formation of the communication objectives and goals then planning analysis analysis and strategy development uh, once we have framed our objectives and goals and we have also the data and the need assessment we will move to the third step that is called planning analysis now whatever the planning we have done we have to analyze that and accordingly what we will do we will also develop certain strategy to to over, to overcome the different corrective measures or bottlenecks which are going to come in the future so that means we have to analyze our planning as well as we have to be prepared for any kind of future recreation uh, in that particular phase 3 now uh, in four, phase 4 that is step 4 we will uh, analyze our audience and the segmentation whatever the uh, audience or the people uh, we have taken and whatever the segmentation of those people I have taken that may be any village it that may be some specific area that may be some specific district uh, this is called audience analysis and also the demographic uh, demographic uh, uh, information related to that particular area accordingly we'll do the segmentation accordingly we'll make our sample and we'll collect our data then step five is media analysis whatever the uh, medium or extension method or the uh, methods of method we have used that is called basically the media analysis whatever the medium i'm going to use for communicating some specific information either that particular medium is appropriate uh, whatever the message is intended to tell those particular audience if that particular message will be flowed through that particular medium or there are some some uh, uh, alternative media is also available we have to look into that particular matter then these analysis will be uh, finished up then message design and development in the phase six that is message design whatever the message or the information i want to float i will properly make up a design for that that will be developed like a project the like a project or the product like if we are uh, we formulate certain new product and we particular uh, try to uh, float that product into some new market what we do we basically design that product according to the need of that particular audience then decide so that means if we are designing certain message or the information for that particular rural people <coughs> so we have to design that message as well and we have to develop that message accordingly we have to float and then in the last step what we will do we will also formative we will do also the formative valuation key whatever the media whatever the audience whatever the strategy whatever the uh, communication method or the message or the different uh, things we have going to use in that particular communication strategy are they feasible are they having a budget that they don't have budgetary constraint or whatever the whatever the type of valuation they are creating that is basically doing worth or not so with this kind of decision we have we make in the last step that is formative valuation next is the extension management functions so this is these are basically the management functions planning organizing staffing directing coordinating reporting budgeting communication monitoring evaluation and utilization these are the different methods which we take like if we we have already done the planning portion in the communication strategy planning uh, in this communication planning now we have to organize organizing means uh, to to organize the different human resources the different uh, uh, uh different types of uh, methods or different types of infrastructure we need different types of technology different tools different equipments we will organize all the things at one place for for extension education staffing means the human resource directing means the specific directions should be there 
for these people who are going to actuate or going to implement the directions of yours so that means the direction should be very specific for these human resource so that they cannot uh, uh, move to certain other direction that means specific direction should be for the uh, the, the people who are working under you uh, coordinating this coordination should be there at the uh, at, at each level uh, when i see that particular hierarchy of the extension workers you can see that key, there are different levels of workers do on do their job at the different different levels there are directors joint directors there are uh, vjas village health groups uh, the the different uh, medical officers if i talk about the health education so these are different different levels uh, of people who are working on the different different levels there is a coordination needed at each and every point if one direction or one um, planning is coming from upwards to downwards that means the feedback should be going from downwards to upwards this coordination should be very uh, important if coordination is not, not there so obviously whatever the message is is intended to flow from upwards to downward that will run in between or the benefits or the other things which are being communicated from from upper level to down level though that that will not reach at that same point at the same, same manner reporting uh, whatever the reporting that like, reporting is like feedback you know how we how we uh, provide feedbacks so if reporting is good that means uh, we are doing our best at the good level if if correct feedback is going upwards budgeting yes it's a cost constraints if we are having the cost um, in our hand or the clear uh, clear funds in our hand that means we have to choose a good strategy or the good communication method but obviously uh, sometimes what happen if budgetary constraints are there so we uh, need to recheck our planning uh, whatever the communication method i'm going to use whatever the extension uh, program how that particular extension program will be worked out uh, we you we have to use mass methods or group methods or individual methods it totally depends upon the budgetary constraints if budgetary constraint is not there so you can use any kind of method next is communication how you are communicating your all exercise related to the management uh, extension management how you are going to communicate that to your audience means whatever the, what the method you are going to use what message is there in that communication it is really important now another thing is that is called monitoring monitoring is that term means we basically try to uh, evaluate uh, what is going to be monitoring is basically uh, checking the directions in which direction i am floating my message and if that message is going in the same direction or not and when i talk about the evaluation evaluation is basically the financial terms evaluation is done in the in the terms of finance means whatever the cost we are planned in the budget actually that cost is uh, there or not or it it is increasing the budget or it is and going above that budget so from where that particular extra cost will be managed so this kind of evaluation is should be done and utilization means all types of resources available within that particular practice or outside that practice though all resources should be optimally util utilized the, no resource should be underutilized no issue should be uh, over utilize that means that utilization portion of all types of resources uh, these resources can be any equipment any machinery any human resource any land any field any 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 material uh, they should be under they, they will be optimally utilized in that particular extension management getting my point now uh, we have to understand what is the extension different kinds of extension strategies one is community development all i have already told you what is community development community development is the movement to design to promote better living for the whole community with the active participation or on the initiative of the community itself maybe and it's a continuous process for interrelation of the cooperation of individuals or groups or working on the common interest 
or the good of the people <coughs> community development is the method by which villages are helped to organize their own efforts to accomplish some improvement and uh, through their organization receive adequate and ready assistance for any and all development departments mean uh, they they feel developed in all departments of their life community development is a program for accomplishing certain activities in the field concerning the <coughs> when welfare of the people belong to same kind of community or same kind of interest that is called basically the community development now another strategy that is called rural development i'm i'm uh, like uh, the whole subject is rural development but rural development is basically a strategy how we are going to develop this strategy <coughs> being a definition what is the as a strategy rural development is designed to improve economic and social conditions of some specific group of rural people this definition is given by the rural bank and if i talk about the concept if concept is of rd is connotes the overall development of the rural areas with a view to improving the quality of life of the rural people now another thing as a phenomena we also study as a phenomena the rd rd is basically the result of interaction between physical uh, between various physical technological economic socio culture and institutional factors we when these factors interacts with each other rd automatically come so this phenomena is there <coughs> and as a discipline it's a, it's basically a multidisciplinary nature we study uh, different kinds of subject different kinds of discipline in one discipline so we this is a intersection of agriculture social behavior engineering management science we we study multiple dis multiple disciplines here in uh, in rural development there are some rural development are also operational in india like uh, i've already told you before <coughs> drought prone areas program <clears throat> desert development program national rural employment program nrep rural landless employment guarantee programs minimum needs program jawahar rozgar yojana jry we we uh, have this program in india accelerated rural water supply program this is basically some some specific program which are focused on some specific community or some specific rural area means these are the program which are which we have we have developed for for specifically for rural people now third is the agriculture development so these are the three basic strategies community development uh, rural development and the agriculture development rural development which encompasses various fields of rural reconstruction including agriculture but agriculture development has become an important development activity as a majority of people largely depend on the agriculture on their for their livelihood and agriculture takes a predominant place in country's economy hence agriculture development is a is also considered to be an important extension strategy like uh, i've already told the strategy that is training and visit where tv system uh, this particular strategy we adopt for agriculture what we do we basically do systematic training and visits in this particular program different extension worker uh, time to time train and visits to the fields of the farmer unified extension services extension extension exclusively uh, concentration on efforts Im imitable contact farmers best use of local resources yes they have to uh, make you uh, sure that the farmers who are having the resources in their local areas they must use because the cost goes uh, low when you use the local resource recommendation according to the ability they they also portray the different kinds of ability they are having so accordingly they according to their abilities they recommend the different activities and tasks the different farming techniques uh, in that particular area provisions for input and credit supply they also tell key from where they can get these kind of inputs like uh, water from where they can get water 
from where they can get seeds what kind of soil they are having these kind of training programs uh, extension worker time to time conduct and credit supply the banking and the credit facilities are there in these banking sectors are there in these rural areas for supplying uh, um, specific credit credit to them linkages with research staff uh, these extension worker also provide some research staff linkages to these farmers or the rural people so that whatever the 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 specific information related to their seed soil water supply agriculture uh, forestry or husbandry they need they can have a chat with these research staff and they can so resolve all sort of problem or all sort of question they are having in their mind related to their farming continuous improvement in the program it is must it is uh, it is uh, very important for agriculture development strategy that there should be a continuous improvement means if if some particular uh, extension worker is visiting to some village one time that means and trying to solve the problems at one time uh, this is next to impossible that every problem is solved in one time that means every time uh, they 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 have to uh, schedule their visit uh, uh, very uh, again and again so that they can solve the ample number of problems in those kind of visits so there is a th then you can see the continuous improve, continuous improvement in those particular uh, problematic situations of those farmers so this is necessary for them to make a continuous improvement in this programs now uh, if i talk about the management plans you can see a chart over here the different activity we do there so uh, you can see if 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 i am an extension organization uh, there are some uh, responsibility on the in the last column and the activities in the in the second column and second and in the third time frame column you can see the different schedules so first what we will do in the management plan first is the audience analysis so at least 3 weeks will be there like if i am going to start from february so i will take 3 weeks of february so who will be responsible the communication planner and the investigator who is being the project head or the project planner he will be catering to this ki he he need to do the audience analysis ki what kind of uh, rural people what kind of village he going to visit or every what what sort of problem he is going to face and what kind of research he is going to do on some specific problem so he need to do the audience analysis whatever the audience is there in that particular village so 3 weeks i have taken the time frame for that and the responsible will be the communication planner and the investigator of that particular project next is objective setting one week we'll take like march 3 weeks i have taken in february and one week of march i'll take uh, for objective setting the communication planner or the investigator or the the project head will be taking care of this objective setting in one week then according when audience analysis is done and objective setting is done we, what we'll do we'll design the strategy in the three weeks so i've taken the rest of the three weeks of march uh, again the responsible will be the communication planning and the in the project head then pre preparation and development of the messages in four weeks of april in four weeks when a one month time has been taken here for four weeks will be taken for preparation and development of the messages what who will do this the subject matter specialist now we need the experts for that so there will be some different person project head is different communication planner is different investigator is different now we need the subject matter specialist for this particular job preparation and development of the messages now next step will be the preparation of media and materials whatever the media i'm going to choose whatever the material i'm going to choose we have to prepare for that so eight weeks the time eight weeks time will be taken that will may and june four weeks of may and four weeks of june we'll take for that so there will be some media specialist in that particular extension organization who will do this activity for eight weeks then pre testing and revision for four weeks now whatever the message we have done whatever the strategy we have taken whatever the objectives we have set whatever the audience analysis we have done and also whatever the preparation of media and materials we have done now we have to 
do the pre testing so in four weeks and that means the one month one uh, one month activity will be given to the pre testing and the revision means whatever the corrective uh, measures will be needed there we will do the revision in this one one month so subject matter specialist and the media specialist both will come together and do this activity now once everything is rectified in revision after that what will start we'll start the training of the staff members now who will be the training tra who will give the training the training specialist now the different personnel will come this is called training specialist two weeks time will be given to these uh, training to staff this training specialist will give the training to the staff personnel then 32 weeks will be taken for implementation now see here from august to march uh, uh, when when i talk i'm i'm talking about from when we have started our program uh, of the project from february till july we were only in the phase of planning now in eighth step we are coming to the implementation phase it will take around 32 weeks 32 weeks means around eight months getting so now extension worker and field staff will take on whatever they have been taught by the training specialist or the subject matter specialist they will take up and move to the field and actuate the planning and try to achieve the objectives of this particular project now in the ninth step after the march in the april two weeks time will be taken for for evaluation and for evaluation to check the effectiveness of the communication process uh, packages whatever the communication method i've taken so they will evaluate and check the effectiveness of that and then uh, provide the report to the uh, managers so what who will do the communication researchers will be there in these two months the, they will evaluate and check the effectiveness of the communication packages now this is the media and material production plan when I say media uh, plan, that means I have taken a media material to be produced over here. That is wall charts. Wall charts are saying ki, these are the these are the methods. This is the method of the media I'm going to operate in the next two months. What were the timing for media? That was for two months. Uh, media and material eight weeks. That means two months. Media specialist will do this now. I'm uh, uh, ma making you available this production plan. I've taken an example of wall charts. Like wall charts have been designed. So what is the objective? The extension worker will be in better position to explain the position and the extension extent of the involvement of the rural people in GJSY. Jawahar Gramil Swarozgar Yojana. That means an employment scheme. And this extension worker will tell through these wall charts to the rural paper or to the audience about what is the scheme what is the prerequisites what are the requirements how will they be benefited so these are the objectives of this media material now user of material and the media who will use extension worker or where we will use he will use in the group meetings this is all the part of planning now now see the time frame preparation of prototype pre-testing and preparation production of final version that means from 1 to 20 january it will start from january 1 to january 20 is this only a preparation of prototype that means wall charts prototype will be uh, prepared by 20 in prepared in 20 days then after 20 uh, pre-testing will be done on 25 and 26 jan so one day or two day they will take for for pre-testing and then final version obviously there will be some rectification will come here in pre-testing if if certain corrective measures are being recorded <coughs> or some deficiencies are being recorded in the wall charts they will notify them and these rective measures rectification measures will be taken and then february 1 to 25 the final version will be printed who will take the responsibility of this production plan the block technical staff the block technical staff they will take an estimated cost wherever applicable means government proposal is there 
so no estimated cost is necessary for estimating this but after in the point where we evaluate all the things we will have to because because at that point of time we have already uh, incurred some, some some sort of cost now pre testing plan this is a pre testing plan wall charts on gj uh, jgsy we have taken a location a specific location a methods to be used and sample presentation to a uh, group of villagers or the potential beneficiaries by extension worker this extension worker will be present this wall charts in village a to the villagers and the potential beneficiaries time frame is january 25 to 26 obviously in the last uh, all, uh, i have already taken this date january 25 26 so this time pre-testing plan will be conducted on january 25 26 there is a specific date for that pre-testing and then who will take up the responsibility block technical staff will be there obviously this block technical staff will be the extension worker and estimated cost not applicable because it's only a planning phase when this will be implemented the actual cost will come now uh, this is only the planning in the last slide till the last slide i was talking in the last slide pre-testing planning and material production plan this is only a production now i'm going to talk about mon monitoring and evaluation that means after implementation of the all planning what kind of monitoring and evaluation techniques will be done so these are some of the methods you have already gone through in different lectures that is network analysis cpm part we can use that is critical path method and per uh, program evaluation and review techniques uh, where we check the total program here the cost related issues the the critical uh, how the uh, material is flowing from one place to another place what are the slacks or what are the uh, costs involved what is the better method so you can use the network analysis for that sample surveys you do rapid rural appraisal techniques are different, different techniques are there scaling techniques for qualitative data you can use uh, qualitative techniques and many other techniques are there for monitoring and evaluation of the me m and e plans now see here monitoring and evaluation plan this is a monitoring and evaluation plan uh, this might be the last slide i think so uh, you can see the monitoring and evaluation indicators when i'm saying monitoring number of farmers participating in demonstration in province a i've taken a village a or a province a so how we will monitor number of farmers participating in the demonstration monitoring and evaluation method what what method i've taken weekly reports by extension worker this way i will monitor how many worker how many uh, audience how much farmers are going to participate here monitoring and evaluation tool kya hai? that uh, what is tool uh, reporting form the reporting form will be there uh, these all uh, farmers will register on this form and then uh, this method will be weekly reports will be generated in training of monitoring and evaluation staff how will we uh, train them we will use the weekly during campaign we will do the campaign for the extension workers for uh, this particular evaluation technique responsible person the communication coordinator this will be the extension worker an estimated cost there will be no because it's a routine work it's a routine work there will be no estimated cost for that number of field visit by extension worker this is the another monitoring and evaluation indicators ki how many numbers how many times he is going to visit that particular province or specific village how we will check that or methods are there is sports check by district extension officer obviously there we are some some higher personnel there who will check who will check that key extension worker is moving to that particular village or not uh, monitoring and evaluation tool will be district officers record book obviously he will check the uh, rec uh, he will maintain the record book and from that record you can you can check the extension workers uh, way Work, uh, workers uh, uh, if he is doing his he is carrying out his duties or not how we will train them continuous throughout campaign report monthly every month that district officer will submit the report to their higher officials that means there will be a continuous report for the campaign 
and who will be responsible the district extension officer that means deo that will be the uh, responsible person uh, who will carry out this activity now this particular person will get some estimated allowances there will be tra travel allowances ta and da that is daily subsistence allowance dsa of the district say if we have taken 1000 rupees per day so th this will be this will be the cost estimated cost which is incurring at the field when when we are in the implementation phase now how we will this is the monitoring way means we are only checking over it now evaluation means when we are evaluating all the activities ability of farmers now now whatever whatever is done here in this monitoring issues now we are going to evaluate the ability of farmers who participated in demonstration to identify brown plant hopper and describe action to take yes this was the activity for which we have designed this was our objective so what was the evaluation tool or the method we have taken <coughs> sample survey we have conducted and this was done by district extension officer and what was the tool interview guideline whatever the uh, interview guideline was there in the sample survey we have adopted that and accordingly we have conducted the sample survey now uh, how we will evaluate immediately flowing following campaign after that campaign we will evaluate ki whatever the questions has been asked in the interview they were related or not or they were uh, right questions or not accordingly we have got the answers or not and who will be the responsible person the communication coordinator now communication coordinator is uh, is checking the district extension officer that sample survey has been conducted correctly or not if this communication coordinator report is not good or whatever the objectives we have created over here they have been not met out in the communication coordinator's report that means district extension officer has not done or obviously when uh, when he is responsible so that means the extension worker is not uh, is responsible for that he has not conducted that particular survey in in a fair way and next question this the next evaluator evaluation is ability of farmers who have been visited by extension workers to describe actions which should be taken in their own fields yes these visits have been done by extension workers and these were uh, checked by this communication coordinator through this sample survey uh, and this sample survey is already filled by this these farmers so that means whatever the results are coming we can check whatever the our objectives and how much we have achieved that objective so this gap should be meet out and now the estimated cost issue when ta and dsa of the interviewers obviously who are going to interview that farmer uh, we will provide ta and da to them and also if we are um, if this communication coordinator is providing certain reports to their higher authorities so that means there should be a printing process of printing ca cost also to so say 2000 rupees the cost so this is this can be the estimated cost involved in this monitoring and evaluation planning so uh, i have just give you a glimpses how we formulate the different plans and how we uh, monitor and evaluate this these plans uh, in the implementation phase how we do the different kinds of planning and how we implement those particular plans to execute to do the rural development in the rural areas how these extension workers do the different things <coughs> now uh I, i think i we have only 5 minutes left so if you have any kind of question in your mind you can ask kenny and simon two persons are there if you have any kind of questions in your mind thank you doctor um i'm simon and trying to ask uh, a little bit of the media material to use uh while executing uh, duties simon, of an simon, can you please Simon, Simon, can you please write your question in the draw chat box so that I can understand clearly what you are trying to communicate to me? All right, sir.
In the meantime, Kenny and Simon, please, please open your cameras, video cameras, so that I can take your pick. Okay, I've got some questions from Kimon and Kenny, both of you. Is it right uh, to first assess to level of literacy level of the community before I can choose media material? Yes, uh, I've already told you this is the first step to, uh, to check the audience first. You have to gather the uh, data of the audience before moving to the media material. It is quietly said by Simon that he, it is it is very accurate that you have to get an idea about your audience first whatever the audience you are have that means all types of demographic information you should have about their their education level their sex and their um, uh, occupation level their income level their their location these all types of demographical information if you are having about your uh, audience then it will be very easy for you to plan your media material and second is what are kenny is asking a question what are some challenges faced by the implementation of different types of extensions and schemes in india okay uh, uh, these are uh, these are some 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 of the schemes I have told you only here. Uh, the challenges is depending because if we talk about India, India is a very diversified uh, country. There are many uh, schemes which run very beautifully in one area. They do not work correctly in the in some other area because uh, the demographic because we we basically follow or frame the policies gen, gen, uh, in the way of generalizing that uh, we basically check the audience but but uh, the problems which are relating some specific area those particular things are not working there that's why you can see that see that ki we have uh, chosen the different extension strategies and scheme for some specific area like some dot schemes are there some hill area schemes are different uh, are there these hill is area hill area schemes are only for those hill area drought prone area schemes are only for drought prone area uh, if i am talking about the minimum yield needs program so that means i am talking about the person or the farmers who are having their income level on uh, below some specific level so that means i am making some minimum needs program for them so they are good schemes but they are some specific challenges because extension workers are going to these uh, particular areas to educate the people about these schemes and government is trying to give full support if they are having they are facing any kind of problem in their area but sometimes what happened because because education level is different their literacy levels are different in different different areas right persons right schemes are not uh, being uh, given to the right person sometimes but problems are there but but we, uh, we if we can initiate at the uh, first phases that means uh, we can achieve our objectives and goals in the in the coming phases i think i have given the answers of the both of your questions kenny and simon you can ask you if you want to ask something else uh, no i don't have any it's clear for okay me. okay oh, just open your camera so that i can click a photo Okay, hi Kenny and Simon. Hi. Hi. Just give me a minute. Uh, and how was the class today? 
is everything was clear if you want to ask anything else oh yeah the class was clear though at sometimes we i think we had for me i had an audio audio problems i couldn't hear you properly okay okay there may be some 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 yeah, technical, technical issues were there okay yeah so uh, i in in my slide i have also mentioned my email id as well so uh, if you if you want some clarification you can you can come on my email emails also you know you can contact with me to that email i'm writing my okay. email id on my chat box yeah yeah i should write in in chat box you can get that email id from the chat box okay that is lkouniv.ac.in this is the right doctor yeah simon if you want to ask just something just to ask uh, yes just to ask the kind of questions that can be actually asked uh you are not audible uh, in line with the the course unit you have just lectured uh, i'm saying simon simon can the you please write can you please write, can you please and, uh, write that can be here? asked can you please write your question in the chat box that will be much better all yes. right all right doctor the nature of question ca that can be examined okay okay uh, uh, simon uh, whatever the question you are going to raise for that audience in the sample survey that should be majorly should be in the local language obviously how you are going to set up your question in that particular uh, questionnaire that question should be uh, close ended question means you should give some close Uh, options to your respondent so that they can understand they can give a close ended answers and uh, second thing i will suggest that ki if uh, uh, that particular questionnaire is in the local language uh, uh, that means whatever the language you speak at the local level like if we talk about in india india is the local language in in uh, different states of uh, india so we will try to formulate the questionnaire in hindi in hindi that is the local language over here so that those rural people can understand easily that particular language so you have to formulate your question in local language and also uh, try to reduce the length of that questionnaire means if you have taken 10 12 15 questions uh, there in their question in your questionnaire so that will be more convenient for that particular person to fill that questionnaire otherwise uh, he will start feeling bored if he is if he start feeling boring out of that questionnaire then obviously he will not uh, respond to your questionnaire so you have to understand the mindset of your respondent as well how how much time that particular audience is having and accordingly you have to frame your question try to frame your questions in a way so that you can take all sort of information from that uh, respondent and with uh, with 
with in a minimum time in a minimum time you are actually taking his time from his job that means you have to take care about the feelings about the times he is sparing for you in your research work getting uh okay okay he is asking about end semester examination so uh, i am not the right person to ask this question i think uh, somebody if in the in the regional center uh, you can ask this question to them ki what sort of questions will be there in the end semester examination nature of questions there is a set pattern of questions set pattern of question you can get the sample papers sample question papers from the internet and also the lms the learning management system you just go and check that uh, on the website also you can get the sample present uh, papers of the previous years of this program uh, and also if you don't get there so just try to um, uh, come in touch with some person in regional centers or in the delhi centers they will help you out in that what will be the pattern of the examinations okay okay sir okay it's 7 7 we are over time if you have any any question uh, unless this particular recording is not going to stop or this class is not going to stop you can ask me or if there is no question you can leave okay we have already uh, over this particular time period if you have any question you can ask otherwise you can leave 